Today, I'm going to chat about conspiracy theories and uh, what is uh, the appropriate burden of proof if someone claims that something is uh, is going on, there's something really weird about this thing. So I, first of all, I'll say it's subjective. Um, I, I have a lot of friends uh, who really enjoy learning about conspiracies and and reading about them, watching, actually not so much reading, but watching videos about them, et cetera. And uh, so there's a saying that, uh, you know, I, I kind of like that, you know, out of every 10 real conspiracies, some people see none, others see three, some people see 10, and some people see 13. Like everything is a conspiracy. And I think that discredits a person. And so for me, as a you know, little bit of, I guess, a scientific thinker, I think, well, you know what, I have a good reason. Uh, I ought to have a really good reason for believing something. Um, and I should admit that I don't know something or that I am just suspicious of something, depending on what that thing is. So it's a, it's a subjective thing on, on several levels. One is, um, who is who is doing the evaluating? Uh, like, are you a person who... Uh, is critical of things? Uh, are, are you? Do you easily accept anything that you hear or not? Um, and then looking at the thing itself, is it a complex thing or is it really simple? Is it is it provable? What would it take to prove a certain thing to you? And, and an example would be if somebody says to me, "Hey, the burgers over at Freddy's, steak burgers and frozen custard." are really lousy burgers, I would just believe them. I'd probably, especially if they were overweight, like I am, I'd be like, well, this person probably knows their burgers. And so I would say, okay, I, I believe that assertion. I'm not going to require any more proof. I just believe it on its face because it's not that important of a thing. I trust the person saying it. And that's, that's really all it's going to take. So their burden of proof is very low for something that is not that important. And in this case, of course, that would turn out to be absolutely correct, that assertion they made. Um, what if somebody says to me, uh, somebody just threw a bunch of leaves in my pool? Well, I, I guess there are various kinds of proof. I, I, there are various issues. I would say, well, how do you know they didn't just fall from a tree? Um, I would say, are you sure you didn't throw them in? And I would ask a series of questions and, and kind of investigate. And it wouldn't take me much to say, okay, yeah, that sounds sounds really highly probable that somebody threw some leaves in your pool. Not a big deal. Maybe a little bit more evidence than Freddie's steak burgers being tasteless, dry, not impressive in the least. Uh, but a little bit more evidence than that, but, but not much. Um, another example might be uh, 100 rank, uh, tanks just rolled into a city. And I'd say, well, I, I you know, need some evidence of this and oh okay we well, have video of these tanks rolling into a city and you only show a few of them but if there's a good reason to believe there were 100 okay fine i'll go with that if you tell me that you think it's a conspiracy that two or more people got together and talked about a thing happening well i would say well yeah you have a video of two tanks rolling into a city so at least those two drivers talked about it and agreed that they were going to go in at the same time. Like that's, you know, maybe not a hundred percent solid, but that's pretty good evidence that a conspiracy happened then. If you can get a thousand tanks rolling in at the same time, it's a much bigger conspiracy. And yeah, I, I believe that without a ton more evidence than just some video footage. Um, what else here? Uh, oh, the 9-11 attacks. Um, people claim that that's a conspiracy. Well, yeah, obviously, I don't think anybody who really thinks about it would say, yeah, Either some radical Islamic folks conspired, or maybe George Bush and the banks and whomever else conspired, but definitely some people conspired. I don't think it was just an accident that several planes flew into several buildings on the same day. So then the next question becomes, okay, George W., you say that this is what this is this is the, the truth behind the 9-11 plane attacks. Okay, that's your proof. And then you ask Luke Krodowski, okay, what's your proof? And then they both are able to say, here's my proof. And they put it forward. And then we can evaluate what they say, question them further, perhaps. And then we come to a, a solution in our own mind as to which we think is more probable. And 
there's also a degree of surety. So what I mean by this is I might come to a conclusion of some sort, like uh, I'll start with something new here. Um, central bankers run the world. And, and I think that that's true. And there, I haven't seen any absolutely conclusive, you know, I haven't seen a, a videotape of somebody writing a letter of confession who was, you know, a Rockefeller or a, a Rothschild or one of the, well, no, I haven't seen that. But I've seen enough stuff to make me feel pretty suspicious that yeah, there's a good chance that's what's going on. How sure am I? Uh, am I sure enough to say that uh, oh, if I'm wrong, you can kill me? No, I'm not that sure. My, my degree or my percentage probability, I'd say, yeah, there's a 70, 80% chance. That's, that's how sure I am. But I'm not 99% sure. It's just, it seems like, eh, it looks pretty good. And doesn't that kind of go to the, the criminal thing of the, the uh, some criminal systems, legal systems will have the preponderance of the evidence versus beyond a reasonable doubt. So in some legal situations, there just has to be a 51% surety that something happened. And in other cases, there has to be 100% or 99%. And that is, again, subjective when we're talking about us as individuals believing in various uh, conspiracies. Uh, so if somebody said to me, uh, the world is not run by known masters, rulers, politicians, whatever you want to call them, kings, presidents, that kind of stuff, it's really run by, they're, those people are just puppets, and the world is really run by somebody higher than them. And then I say, well, do you have any proof of this? And you say, well, yeah, because they meet at Davos and they meet at these other places. And the, so, yeah. And uh, Bill Gates was seen getting onto the same plane as Bill Clinton. And then they were also seen at the Bohemian Grove. So, obviously, <laughs> well, that's not the best proof ever. Now, here's the challenge if there are a bunch of very wealthy people, who are also very intelligent, who are working together to make sure that their conspiracy isn't discovered, yeah, there's not gonna be much evidence. Like, you're watching this video right now, I bet you if you called me, we got to get, well, you wouldn't call me, but you text me or email me, I hate phone calls, but we would get together, we'd sit down with a yellow pad and we'd come up with a plan to rob a bank. There's a good chance that if we went to the hassle of getting a yellow pad, and sitting down and writing it up, we could definitely get away with the crime. Like it's it's the idiots who get caught. So if you and I, well, I'm assuming you're not an experienced bank robber, I've never robbed a bank, but if we absolute rank amateurs could put together this conspiracy and likely get away with it, well, then absolutely people who are way smarter than me, way richer than me, way more experienced than me, way more everything, way more resources. Well, of course they could get together and not have excellent proof. Like think of all the criminal cases that are like, everybody knows the guy did it, but there's just no really good proof. Well, these are idiots. You can't even get good proof on the idiots. So if people are really bright. Yeah, I acknowledge there are some things that are really suspicious. A challenge though, is when someone believes every single conspiracy that they hear, and then they send me yet another link of look what else is happening. And so th this came to mind this morning. I saw a Facebook thing, and it, I've seen all of these things about Bill Gates buying up all the farmland in the United States, and Bill Gates is a bad guy, and he, he yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm currently reading the book, The Real Anthony Fauci, and I've watched some James Corbett stuff on Gates, and like, wow, this these are really things that make me suspicious and think he's a bad dude. So this whole farm thing, well, I saw somebody's post this morning from somebody who probably doesn't like Bill Gates, who probably is a liberty-minded person who also has a lot of conspiracy friends. And the post made me kind of do some of my own research, do your own research, which is just a tired thing of saying that I'm, I'm telling you that something is true, but I don't have any real proof behind it. You go out and prove it true or wrong. No, you come to me with the idea, you better do it. Anyway, that's a tangent. So I think that this largely came about by a really crappy, misleading headline that Forbes had, and it reads like this, Bill Gates now owns the most farmland in America. Well, the average person who hears that is going to go, wow, he owns 51% of the farmland in America, but let's read it again. 
maybe you're already thinking, wait, Bill Gates now owns the most farmland in America. Well, yeah, he owns more than any other person. So I kind of looked into it a little bit, and there are 92-ish uh, million acres of farmland in the United States. And I don't know the exact descriptions, but that's the number. And Bill Gates owns somewhere in the 240, 260,000, let's, let's just round it up and say 300,000 acres of farmland. So he owns roughly a third of a million, but there are 92 million. So this means he owns way less than 1% of all of the farmland in the United States. So is that still a lot of farmland? Yeah. Does it make you think maybe he's going to try to do some of his, you know, take that over like he took over the technology, uh, the, the computer technology stuff and the, the healthcare of the world and all this? Yeah, maybe he has sinister plans. Maybe it's just a really good investment thing. And if you have a bunch of money, you're, you know, who's it, Jim Rogers? He's been saying, yeah, invest in farmland. He's been saying that for 10, 15, 20 years. Farmers have been saying it for centuries and, and millennia. So maybe it's not some big nasty conspiracy. Maybe it's just some rich dude who's saying, hey, this is where things are going, um, either through him or just on its own. The United Nations is really pushing for a veganism because it's better for Mother Earth. It's better for the planet. Well, it's all part of this whole sustainability agenda and planet's not in that, that kind of trouble and it's not caused by man, in my opinion. The, the climate's going up and down and left and right and it always has and it always will. And it's not like we're gonna you know, stop eating cows and therefore they don't have to grow as much corn and now it's gonna reverse whatever global trends have been happening for billions of years and now all of a sudden it's gonna screech to a stop. And No, I don't believe any of that crap. But I can look at the United Nations uh, Agenda 2030s, the sustainability thing, and I can say this is the direction of the future. It's probably a better idea to invest in a bicycle shop than a diesel pickup truck shop um, because one of them is not wanted by the United Nations and the other is. So if Bill Gates is also saying, hey, there's this big propaganda push, whether or not he's the one behind it, there's this big propaganda push for plant-based diets and, and veggie, this junk that Burger King tried to put out of the Whopper with this fake meat. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, moment of silence for anybody who had to eat one of those. Anyway, th this is not saying that he's a bad guy. This is saying he sees a trend and he's going for it and he's investing in it. Now, maybe it's sinister, maybe it's not. Um, now, some of the, the bigger conspiracies that I do tend to believe in, and I, I don't have a good reason for it, so my surety isn't going to be that high, but I listen to the arguments and I go, oh, okay, yeah, that, yeah, I can see that. I can see how there wouldn't be any evidence and how that looks decent. One of them is uh, a book I read that G. Edward Griffin wrote called The uh, uh, the Creature from Jekyll Island, talking about central banking. And there were also some other people who wrote on it that I've read bits and pieces of, Rothbard and, and others. And I believe that mostly what he says is mostly true. John Taylor Gatto, uh, his book, The Underground History of the Imag uh, American Education System, yeah, definitely not a scholarly piece. Definitely lots of little pieces here and there. Doesn't that make you suspicious? Yeah, not a good scientific case at all. I'll give you that. But when I look at all the hundreds of assertions or pieces of evidence, loosely can be considered evidence, that he offered, at the end of the book, I was thinking, yeah, this seems like this could be a real thing. Now, I'm, I'm not going to promise anybody, I'm not going to promise that I'll kill myself if I'm wrong, but hey, it's enough to make me think, yeah, there's a pretty good chance that that's how things are. Um, another are some of the things that James Corbett, Corbett Report, some of the things he does. I don't know where the, where the line is, though. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of truth or a lot of evidence that is lacking um, in a lot of assertions that a lot of people are making. And I'm not really that entertained by it. I'm disappointed uh, because I think that if we are going to be philosophers, 
if we're going to be lovers of liberty and we're going to uh, research ideas and such, we need to be pretty serious. We need to be academic about it. We, we need to have higher burdens of proof that we require to believe in certain things. And again, it's up to you. It's up to me what we each choose to believe. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? Am I, where am I off base? I've got to be off base on some of the things I've said. Where am I most off base? Um, what, what are your thoughts on this whole conspiracy business? Uh, do you believe in them all? Do you believe in none of them? Do you believe in, hey, what, do you, what do you believe? Be interested in hearing what you have to say. Hopefully this was of help to you and help you form your own ideas, which are probably way better than mine. Please do subscribe. Please do hit the notification bell. Um, I'm working on 2022, um, getting up to 500 subscribers. I know that's tiny and y'all are laughing at me because I'm such a, a small timer, but that's kind of a hope and a goal for this year. And uh, if you can help me get there, I'd sure appreciate it. Thanks again for spending your valuable time with me.